And, and then, then the alarm will go off. You know, she'll lean over to give me a kiss before she gets out of bed to go to work. And she's going to see the zombie head. Oh, my goodness. Are you, are you at least going to record the audio of the screen? Oh, I I probably will pick it up from the inside the studio. I mean, you know, but the, the, I don't want to be in the room. I'm going to go in the studio because I don't want to get hit. <laughs> That's a waste of a good prop. You know that. <laughs> eh. Unless you get personal satisfaction yourself out of it. Hey, share it with the audience a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I would, but I, I, I you know, I, 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 she would be so mad if I recorded that. I mean, this last time, you know, she even went to work and telling her people where she worked at, her employees, what I did. And every one of them, all guys, right? And actually, what they say is, well... One guy said, get a divorce. I remember what she said that on that one. But they all said, why would your husband be so mean to do that? I didn't oh. I didn't think it was mean. Of course, you know, it's a guy. guy. Now, let's face it. Half the guys that work with her probably would, if they would have thought about it, they would have done it themselves. Let's be honest. Yeah, they've got ulterior motives why they're buttering her up, obviously. I mean, seriously, they... they you know, they would probably, someone would probably do it to their own spouses, too. But, you know, when it comes to maybe another woman, they're going to say, oh, you divorce them or they shouldn't do that. You know how it is. Yeah, well. It, it, everybody, everybody wants to be politically correct and not offend somebody. And I think a good joke every so often like that, it sounds, uh, sounds okay to me. No, I just think it'd be fun after all these years not really pulling any jokes on her. To, you know, just have a little fun this, you know, Halloween. I, I you know, I'm in, a, I'm in the spirit. I, I'm in really in a good mood. I mean, look at what's happening with the show. I mean, some major changes that's going to happen on the 15th of November. Uh, two guests a night. I mean, this is a whole bunch of things. Uh, the wacky news, the paranormal news at the top of the hour. I mean, you know, and then reports uh, like once a week on cryptics, reports once a week on UFOs. I mean, we got the whole show filled, you know, the what I think a lot of shows are lacking. I agree. We got a lot going on, plus the roundtable, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, how, how do we know it's a roundtable? It could be square. It could be opposite. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, you and your thematics. We don't even oh, we don't table. we don't have a round ta- table people. Yes. He's at his place. <laughs> he's over his place, thousands of miles apart. I know we're in my place, and uh, yeah, we don't have a round table. We just say it's a round table because what else do we call it? Imaginary <laughs> round table. I don't know. <laughs> we just sound like we're close to each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys are like three thousand miles away from me. I swear, long yeah. way. Yeah, go go eat some pistachios. No, I know. They, no, don't ever eat pistachios before you go to bed because you will wake up uh, way before you should with uh, acid reflux and be miserable all day. <laughs> well, saying. I can honestly tell you, don't eat salted cashews late at night watching scary movies because when you go to bed, you're, you all of a sudden you, you get thirsty, so you drink a glass of water. Then when you get older, then about 20 minutes later, you got to run to the, the men's room or ladies' room, and then, you know, you get back into bed, you're comfortable, and then you're thirsty again because you ate all the salt, so you, you repeat the whole thing all night long. Not a good thing to do. <laughs> no, thanks. I'm good with that. How about you, Sam? Oh, I love I just was looking at a can at the store of, uh, of those habanero-style salty almonds. Mm. Nice can of those, and the only problem is got to have water with it. I have a real <laughs> problem eating nuts because they're hard to swallow, and you got to always have something to drink, especially something like that. <laughs> the the hotter the better. better. Just give me the hottest thing you could possibly give me. I don't even care if they're coated with ghost peppers. I'm all, I'm for it. Oh, I'm on it. Hey, did you see that posting today? Some lady it has taken. Garlic and, and chocolate covered him and wrapped him up, and she plans to give him to kids for Halloween. Oh, there's that's not a treat. That's more of the trick. I don't know what it is. Could you, I've never even thought of a garlic, you know, chocolate covered. 
you know what else uh-huh. I've seen? I've seen where they just putting sticks and onions and tomatoes and doing the same thing, you know, instead of a candy apple or chocolate, chocolate-covered apple. It's an onion or a tomato, so like a trick, like you're saying. So now you bite into it. Could you imagine the facial expression from that? Oh, Lord. I, I did hear about the caramel-covered co- co- uh, onions. Now, that's that's pretty bizarre. Well, tomato would be better if you got one that's kind of on the ripe side, and then you caramel, you know, <laughs> cover it, and you get somebody taking a big bite out of it. Yeah, it kind of looks like an it kind of looks like an apple too, doesn't it? Yeah, it looked like ketchup all over their face yeah. and all their clothes. <laughs> they, they would be like, "What's wrong with this apple, mommy?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, hey, you, James, you live in an area where you have kids, or I don't, and I Sam doesn't. Do you get many trick or treaters? I don't. I've lived here for going on eight years. I think I've had three trick-or-treaters. They just don't come by here. Maybe they're just scared of me. I don't know. I end up eating all the chocolate. (laughs) Well, have you ever thought about turning your lights on and opening up the curtains in your front room on Halloween night? No, I usually sit right out on the porch, you know, but just they don't, they just don't uh, Halloween around here. I don't know. They don't like the area, I guess. Oh, wow. Are you in a bad area or a nice area? No, it's a nice area. It's not bad. Not bad at all. They just like everybody here. It's a small town. They always go to the rich section for some reason. I don't. I don't live in the rich section. I live in like the middle class, whatever you call it. But they, everybody here goes to the rich section, which I don't know why. Probably because they get more candy. I don't know. Well, my kids figured that out when they were young. You know that if they went into the wealthy area, of course they got some of the wealthy people were really bad. But, I mean, a lot of them would give them, you know, like the dollar size candy bars or a bag, you know, of candy and all that stuff. Where you go to other places and you get like, oh, boy, there's like three little pieces of candy that you ease a micro- microscope to find what they are. Hmm. They probably remember <laughs> what you gave them last year and not going to come to your door anymore. I don't know. It's funny. Last year, because I I didn't buy candy, and I had all these kids come knocking on the door. I lived here for 20 years, and out of 20 years, 18 of them, nobody's ever come to the house. You know, and then one year, I had people coming, kids coming. I had no uh, candy, because, you know, nobody ever shows up. So I was giving them dollar bills in their bag. (laughs) I felt guilty. I really did. I even thought about turning all the lights off and going into my bedroom and make sure that light was off where nobody would come and knock on the door, but I just couldn't do it. It was weird. Maybe we got new neighbors, and that's what probably did it. <laughs> I'm going to go to your house for trick or treat and get a $20 bill. Well, you have to understand, when I originally moved here, there was maybe 15 houses on our road which is, if you fall it all the way down, it's about two, three miles long. That's all it was. It was all cedar trees all over here. And then, you know, after I moved in, you know, people would buy, you know, houses and log it out. Because, you know, this lot, cedar trees are worth a lot of money. So the first yeah. thing they do, they buy uh, the property. And before the house gets built, they log it all off. And then they don't have no trees at all. I don't know how many people come to my door a year and say, hey, you want to sell your cedar trees? I go, I I have almost two acres of cedar trees. I, I Why would I want to look like I'm living in a city? Uh, the, the trees are here because I got critters crawling up and down them. I got, I got eagles on my property. I got owls on my property. I got woodpeckers on my property. I got possums and all these <laughs> other things on my property, you know, and, and I I love it. I'm secluded. I don't have to look at anybody. <laughs> You've been here, Sam. You know how it is. You go into it. It's trees there. You saw the trees behind the horses and they're off the side. Would you like some of my elk? <laughs> no. no. I don't. No, they get into your refrigerator. Here. Yeah. No. We. I have a very rural situation where I'm at, so there's nothing keeping all the critters from coming in here. It's a little irritating, but... Uh, I mean, I actually have herds of elk that come here every night. They just make their way. I They leave their evidence of letting me know they <laughs> yeah. were there the night before. So you, you go figure that. Oh, yeah. That's where the broom comes in <laughs> handy. That Definitely. Or a rake. Yeah. No, in my case, I need a shovel. <laughs> we used to, when I first That's moved here, much. 
<laughs> we used to have a raccoon that was huge. I mean, it was huger than the dogs we had. And it was, you know, I don't even know what happened to, but that thing would hang off of my gutter and wait for us to put food out for one of the cats because it would love eating the cat food. But, you know, that thing was so tame, it would come up to you and then it rub itself on you. Uh, I don't trust raccoons, though. Yeah, with that. Even when they're nice. Yeah, they can bite you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, if you start feeding them, they're going to expect it. That's the problem. Well, in this case, we put the food out for the cat, you know, the uh, cat we had at the time. We had a couple cats, but we had an outside cat. And, you know, it would beat the cat for the food. I mean, it was, he thought it was its food. So, it would, you know, every time we put the food out, here come the raccoon. And you're wondering why your cat was getting so thin. Yeah, <laughs> oh, no, they, believe me, you saw my acreage. They can find enough mm-hmm. mice around here. That's what I used oh. to hate, too. The, the the couple, then all of a sudden, we instead of having one cat outside, we had like five or six of them. And they would always leave their donations of mice going up the stairs to the house. So you have to watch where you walk, otherwise you, you know, icky. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're just showing their appreciation for whatever. I know. We had a cat that did that quite a bit, too. Uh, it's a little irritating, but... You know, that's what they're made for. Yeah. Well, it keeps the mice away. And, and you know, when you got a little mini farm, you you know, because you, you have a little grain for the horses and you got oats for the goats. It kind of rhymes as an oats for the goats. But, I mean, you know, you, you, get, you get mice and rats. So that's where the cats come in handy and it gets rid of them for you. Yeah, I had a, uh, <laughs> some, I had a rat or a mice. I wish I had a cat then I'm in my greenhouse. You'd get in there and start climbing up the tomato plant. We're actually just uh, eating the tomatoes. So they're likely to get in. I tried to even save my strawberry plants, and something's boring holes underneath the ground to get to them, even when I try to cover them up. So it's a no-win situation. There's certain things I cannot grow except really hot peppers that I know nothing's going to eat except myself. Yeah, I found out we used to grow, you know, we had a garden here back years ago and it, by the time everything was ready to you know harvest it was already almost all ate up or what was left was gone i mean the corn would be gone the tomatoes we had a whole bunch of strawberry plants i finally pulled them out and and got rid of them and gave them away to people because you know everything else was eating it and we would get maybe five or six strawberries out of about 100 plants i'm not joking we had peas the same thing. Every, all these other critters would get a hold of them and there would be nothing left. So why bother having a garden when you're, no. Mm-mm. Oh, they'll eat the leaves too. It's not, they're not even waiting for the fruit or anything like strawberries. They'll eat the leaves and everything, the stems. I don't know. I guess they're edible. Yeah. But, you know, they're going to die. So I, I, I gave up. Yeah. James, do you have a garden ever? Oh, yeah. I, matter of fact, my tomato plant out front is 10 foot tall and full of tomatoes. Seriously. Oh, God. And, uh, and you know what you can do on Halloween? You can throw them at the kids as they don't come to your house. Hey, you. <laughs> yeah. Trick or, or you treat. Go ahead and cover them in caramel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're trying to get me in trouble. Oh, I guess. Hey, guess what, guys? Uh, it is time to go to break. Uh, now, Sam, are you going to be calling back at the last half an hour? Sure will. Okay. Yep. Okay, well, hey, guys, we'll catch you all later. And not you, uh, uh, James, so just mute your your thing. Okay? You going to answer? Got, got you. It's muted. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to make sure. So we're going to be back in two and a half minutes. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. We've got a great guest on, who is a regular guest, actually, Jason Offit, who wrote a book of uh, Chasing American Monsters, just in time for Halloween to tell us some scary stories and reports. So we'll be back in two. Some ask themselves why the big time has passed them by. 